Hello, and welcome to Once More with Feeling, Hurt Retrospective, Volume 1, the third part in our Hurt Retrospective series. So yeah, as stated, we'll be reviewing Volume 1, which... This will be a bit of an interesting one for a few reasons, as uh, my research uncovered. The only thing is, is you know, if it's supposed to be a double album originally, what were they going to call it originally? I think it was just going to be Volume 1 and Volume 2. It's sort of like a double disc set and it would be released together. That makes sense, I guess. It's wondering whether they had like, a special name for it and then decided because it was split in half and they're going to lose it as Volume 1 and Volume 2. Mm. I suppose if they actually had like, a different name, it would be like Use Your Illusion by Guns N' Roses, which because it's used, yeah, Use Your Illusion 1 and 2. Mm. So. I mean, what's interesting about that side of things is the fact that uh, Capitol Records thought it would be too much of an investment. Which is st- stupid reasoning, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I can... Wasn't, it, wasn't this the first album they got a proper label for? Mm. So it's starting, it's starting out as like, the first major release being a double album. I mean, it's a little bit too enthusiastic, but I don't know. I, I don't know, I mean, I can understand the logic behind it, because if it's the first major album, then you're going to want to stagger things a bit, because, well, for one thing, if it's a double album, you've got to reduce the cost of the total. Yeah, you want me to constantly say it was two albums, and people won't be interested, particularly as a band they haven't really heard anything about before. Yeah. Um, it is a bit strange, but um, there are upsides to them having it as two albums instead of just a double album, in that they actually took the time to improve on what was already on Volume 1. Well, that's true. I mean, in case of, probably, if they had tried to write two albums on the material at once, probably you're going to get things lost in the process. Yeah. Uh, between the two shows, I knew the second one's coming out later on, you can focus on making the first one better. Mm. And then you have time after that one's released to then focus on the second one. Yeah. So. Um, interestingly enough, it does feature a couple of songs from the previous two albums, which we'll go into, but I definitely think that these versions of those songs are much better. Mm, better as well. Mm. The new version of uh, Dirty, or one of the songs, is actually really improved, I think. Mm. So. Well, Dirty wasn't on a previous album, I don't think. Wasn't? No. Um, I'm of, it's I think c- Unkind. Uh, yeah. It's Unkind and Cold Inside that are the two. Hmm. It's Cold Inside. I was thinking of Unkind. For some reason, I thought Dirty from my head. I don't know why. Yeah. So, Any- that was mistake for the week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's... There definitely feels like a theme to this album. Mm, it seems a lot more cohesive compared to the first two. Yeah. It's the same kind of style to it and structure and kind of well, yeah, thematic lyrical content as well. Yeah. I mean, it's all, the wiki page I'm reading um, says about how the album contains many tracks that are very dark in nature and explains such suggestions as twisted logic from over-obsession in religion in rapture, pain from love in both falls apart and unkind, and drug, ad- drug addiction in overdose. Especially it's all about overdosing on things, I guess. Or yeah. Just having too much or something. Mm. Uh, too much of something good is still too much. So yeah. Um, well, as I'm saying, drugs are a good thing, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that's essentially the overview stuff that we can discuss. Um, so, track one, Shallow. I think, I mean, uh, the was, I think it was the previous album, mm-hmm. actually, Consummation. I mean, like, it's the first song on that album didn't really catch my attention that much. Mm-hmm. This actually, I think, is a good opener. Yeah. I mean, for me, it, it feels like they're experimenting a lot in sort of style and sound. Um... Musically, it does slightly remind me of Creed. Um, yeah, I guess I can hear that. Um, mainly songs like Bullets. I don't know much about Creed, but I have some experience with them. And from what I know, all the various songs here and there, mm. I name them, but I know I've heard them through the course of time I've listened to music. Yeah. But it's just the same kind of style. Yeah. But I think the thing I do have for this album is, as with the previous albums, is certain songs have reminded me a lot of other artists. Yeah. Um, so quite a lot of moments you know, doing their own thing kind of stands out but they do still have these songs here and there mm. that, you know, that makes think oh, I listen to a different band yeah um, not necessarily a band uh, I mean this is an opener it feels very appropriate because it sounds big hmm. no. it sounds like very kind of quite a uh, lot into self fixed and security then mm. like, all the guitars only come in so, yeah. Yeah. And also, it's got the orchestral backing, which really drives it forward. Mm, that's a nice touch. 
I just wonder how they actually recorded that like live, or used some kind of synth or something for it. Um. Well, the thing I mean, is, obviously, you know that the singer can like, play violin. I think it was. Wasn't yeah, it? it's violin. So maybe it'll be him that's doing that. Mm. I mean, they could have easily brought brought in an actual orchestra for that bit. I don't know. I can't. Possibly. Uh, I mean, it doesn't actually say anything where that's concerned, but that doesn't actually mean anything in the grand scheme of things. No, it's just not any original, it? Mm. So. I mean, they they had an extra bassist for this one, so that's one thing. Uh-huh. But yeah, it it feels big and definitely grabs your attention, sort of like, this is an album you need to listen to. I don't know what it reminds me of. I don't know the sound reminds me of something very complacent. Mm. Yeah. This reminds me of something, but I can't think. But I think that's probably a good sign because it means it reminds you of something, but not enough that it sounds like rubber. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a brilliant opening track because it gets you by the throat and it's sort of like you will listen. Well, I just, I think it interests me actually is the kind of ending. Mm. It kind of you finish this, it kind of has like a weird kind of guitar riff bit after that. Yeah. Looking at the lyrics, I mean, I think what helps is it speaks of frustration and the title feels very appropriate, you know, shallow. You're watching the cars, movies and stars, they are your lifetime, yet all that I am is half what you are. Maybe some other time I'll get it right, I'll get it right. Oh, sweet voice on the phone, you sound so alone, because you couldn't be wasted, yet all I ever was, to you I am less than a man. Yeah, it sounds like he's not really happy with the way things are going, and he wants himself to be stronger. Mm. He can't quite make it. Yeah. And, well, it, it could be... Too... The kind of theme that you've had before makes, it does fit into the kind of what I'd expect with that. Mm. It could be talking to himself, it could be talking to another person. Given the nature of Hurt's lyricism and musicianship, I feel like both are equally applicable. Hmm. I guess it's like the way they seem to write their songs, because it, it could well be a reflection on their own thoughts and feelings. Yeah. But also it's done a kind of third person way of doing it as well, so it could well you know, be taken in either way. Mm. It uh, simply requires quite a lot of skill to pull that off, so I also commend him for that. Mm. Um, but I'm slowly changing out of phase, and I don't know why it is. It's an ever-changing, simple thing that I know, but don't know why it is that I'm longing for a sweet embrace, which I miss. It feels like it could be continuing some of the themes from the last album. Quite possible. I mean, it's not unlike bands to do that kind of thing. They kind of touch on certain subjects in certain albums, and they bring it back later on in different albums. Yeah. does raise a lot more questions about the lead singer's life and his experiences, you know, where this is exactly coming from. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's been just quite obvious that, you know, he's been through some shit, actually. Yeah. But the question is, no one really knows exactly what. But it seems obvious that, you know, he's drawing from this experience mm. when he's writing his songs. Yeah. He's actually doing a very good job of, you know, showing you know, stuff off without actually having this been mm. That's unlikely, I think. Yeah. Um, next song, which... I swear it does sort of slightly flow from one to the other. Well, they did the kind of thing a lot in um, the first album, so I kind of them, didn't they? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. There's a bunch of songs that kind of linked together. I thought they did it in consummation as well, actually, so... Yeah. Um, Rapture, which is quite obviously sort of a religious objection. Hmm. Um, the bass player starts out with. Yeah. Um... Because I think bass is quite often unused in music, you don't really get to hear it that much, but sometimes you get some bass lines and stuff like that, it's like, yeah, that's good. Mm. Uh, Rapture, um, now when it, how it starts out, it's it does remind me of Disturbed a little. I think the vocals at the start especially do, actually. Mm. Um, so, last time I did Disturbed's vocals are not exactly the kind of thing you replicate, but yeah. they improve vocals in this song make me think a lot of that. Mm. Um, but its progression makes it able to form its own identity, really. Um, it's not so much it it's they're sort of like well we want to show our influences but we want to show that we're able to break out from there 
we're just very much like, oh, we, we know what our influences are, we know what we like, we know the kind of sound we want to go for, but we're going to take those elements and craft something new with it. Yeah, um, it does go into the sort of vicious, frustrated, explosive tirade that is common of disturbed music, but it's got its own identity and personal recognition. Hmm. Right. Sure. Um, I mean, you can point to literally any band, and you'll probably find something that's anti-religious. I'm not bad to touch on any subject, especially in kind of hard rock and metal areas. Uh, the video for the song is really cool. Mm-hmm. The video for the song is really cool. I still need to watch the video. <laughs> it's actually done in kind of animation Peter Craft style. It's really awesome. Wait, is it the one with all the sort of shadowy figures that are sort of elongated yeah, creatures? Awesome. Yeah. Oh, I have yeah. seen that video. Mm. It's it's kind of like oh, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. It's it's like sort of um, shadow puppets. Yeah, that's a good description, I think. Because mm. it, it does remind me quite a bit of a uh, Coraline as well, actually. Mm. The, the kind of character, I mean, the main character especially, the, the kind of it's all dizzy to face of structure. It's basically think of the um, the father in Coraline. Mm-hmm. I love that film, so pretty well like it so much. Mm-hmm. This is the first time I've actually talked about videos and uh, video, uh, well, videos, I guess. Mm. <laughs> but, well, it's a bit difficult to discuss videos in something where... It doesn't have a video. Yeah. I suppose it's been the other lady, which is equal to a screenshot from the video just to show the style. Yeah, I mean, it's one yeah, of the... Look, I watched the video, it's really cool, it's on YouTube, so yeah. it's not hard to find. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I will put a link to the video in the description so people can have a look for themselves. You know what else the video does? It makes you think of the R style and Dune style of the game. Mm. Yes, it does. Very, very similar. So, yeah, yeah I hadn't. Around, I, guess, cause... I hadn't thought of that before, but it, it is a very similar art style. I like it. Mm. Yeah. So another nice effect I like in this song is the kind of use of the main vocals, the kind of echoey vocals, and alongside it as well. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like quite out front, though. It's kind of in the back. I like, really like it when songs do that. Mm. Uh, trying to. What's interesting is the vocals tend, for the most part, now when we say they, they're similar to Disturbed, that it's not when David Draymond is screaming, it's more similar to Disturbed when he's, when he's got a lot of control and restraint in his voice. Yeah, I can hear that. Yeah. That's what I like about Disturbed, so he has that kind of control of his voice, so I like it here as well. Hmm. Um... I think everyone kind of recognises just uh, because of, you know, the oh, ah, ah, thing and all that stuff. Yeah. But it's actually a very nice kind of really nice thing as well. Mm. Of course, that wah ah, ah, ah is based on a monkey. I'm not even <laughs> kidding. Last episode. I think we did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the lyrics, which really... It, it's all... I feel like when Hurt is constructing songs, it's almost like it's... Um, oh, what's the term for it? Psychedelic in nature, and when I say when I say psychedelic in nature, I mean in the literal definition, as in its revealing of the mind. Yeah, I guess I could say it that way. Um, I think I Yeah, because the lyrics go: "In the life of the wrong, a love lingered on, love lingered on to frustration, and if our love is so wrong, then what should we do alone, or am I just a picture in a photograph?" Why are we stuck in this pantomime, fearing a god who died, one who would not deny lovers? And I don't care what they say, if what you need is your faith, then take a look at my face and know that till your rapture falls to pieces, until your rapture falls to pieces, find in me the room to breathe, simple things like suffering. So, uh, it's one of the charming lyrics. Mm. Nice yeah, I mean, these lyrics smack of nihilism and just general frustration at the whole concept of religion. Yes, it does seem like quite a common topic. Mm. But there's, there's so many different ways of you know, tackling it, really. Yeah, well, the interesting thing to note is the whole concept of the rapture is apocryphal, so it could quite easily be that the lead singer has experienced frustration with people who actually believe in the rapture, even though it's nowhere to be found in the Bible itself. I think, I think a lot of people think, oh, it's in the Bible, then it realize actually it's in one of the, like, except texts, or actually in the main book itself. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, um, but yeah, interesting lyrics and sound. It's one of those cases of one thing that I noted throughout this album is, I mean, I know you said some songs stuck with you more than others, so we will go to that and judging each song. Yeah, so I think you can with almost any album really. Yeah, for me personally, there isn't really a weak song. Hmm. I mean, I think. There's a couple of songs on both Consummation and Subtitle which I didn't get on particularly well, but this thing seemed, I said, not only is it more coherent structurally and style wise, but what does more coherent quality wise as well? Yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything in it that quite stands out as much as something like, say, Abusive Sid or Consummation uh, Title Track, for example. Yeah. On the other hand, the lower end stuff is better, so. Yeah. yeah. Next song, Overdose. I really like this song. So, yeah. Yeah. For me, I, I'm undecided whether this is my favourite track or my second favourite on the album. It could well be up there for me as well. I mean, I think, I think the opening part especially kind of sums up what I think about it. It's the kind of rhythmic vocal use is really, really interesting. Yeah. I mean, same thing about the, the ticking of time. Yeah. I mean, what makes it really work is it's very experimental in sound. Hmm. Um, other than anything else in the album, I say, actually. Yeah. Because it's got sort of aspects of new metal, aspects of prog rock, so bits of classical backing here and there, and there's this build and build over the course of the song, which kind of it emphasises the idea of apocalyptic weight. And well, which combined with you know the idea of overdosing is that someone's getting closer and closer to going beyond the time they can come back from it. Yeah, and. The, the build-up really helps to emphasise the whole concept of when he finally... You know, there's that one bit where he the lyrics are just angry tirade. Mm. And well, also, I mean, pretty much every single video we've done so far that has a song like this, I really like songs that build up like this. Yeah. It's just it's my kind of thing. And this is a good example of it, once again. Yeah. And um, after that... And the thing is, that angry tirade feels like a frustration and anger at someone who's succumbed to addiction. Mm. And it feels like, nearing the end, there's sort of this breathing backing. And that breathing, it feels like it's sort of him trying to calm himself down. Well, I think it's either that or possibility of the fact that he's getting more and more angry as the person collapsed and, like fall into the pit that they're falling into mm. maybe the breathing at the end is just you know, symbolising the fact that they've gone too but they've actually overdosed and died because of it mm. and it's thinking oh crap I can do anything it's over yeah. why didn't I do anything <laughs> that's my take on it anyway yeah I, I think both takes have validity um, yeah, the lyrics uh, I'll take one cause I needed to feel it so much I had an emotional crutch but I'm feeling bored so I'll take some more because nothing is happening. And once you told me you loved me so much, I foolishly began to trust, but now I'm ignored and I'm taking more till something is happening. Well, this might actually be arguably one of the most depressing songs in the album. Yes! With the kind of, his vocals get more and more desperate towards the end as well. Yeah. It starts out kind of relatively kind of nonchalant, I guess, a little bit. Mm. And then gets angry, and then it's like, uh, oh god, no. Mm. Uh, Morpheus, how could you leave me when I had need of your love? Stop holding back. Give me one reason to think you're decent. When I am alone, don't you ever try to bring me back? Mm. I mean, it... yeah, I think the amount of power the song she has, especially when you kind of put a build on at the end, it's mm. just, yeah, you really stand out. Yeah. Um, it's just. As you say, it gets more desperate as it progresses, and it really paints the whole idea of someone who's going through addiction, and whatever's happening in their life, they're turning to the addiction to make it easier to cope. Mm. But I think addiction is never an easy topic to deal with, so mm. I think it's where it does a good job of portraying the kind of well, potential suffering of someone going through it. Yeah. Um, it's just not an easy thing to pull off. Once again, I was so going to accommodate the actual vocalist and doing a good job. Yeah. It, for me, it's one of those songs that definitely after listening to, you do have to take a minute just to, you know, let things settle. Especially if you're in a case of, you know, you're not doing something else at the same time, you're focusing on something stuff. Yeah. Because earlier I was going through it thinking just, 
I just gonna sit here and say I'll listen to this one properly. Yeah. So yeah, that's true or something. Um, the other thing is, um, I'm just thinking, the very last few notes are sort of a strange final collapse of instrumentation. It does kind of just fall apart. Mm. Well, that way you can get I think it's his kind of ideals and I'm just laughing. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of like a... You know when a tape would get chewed up by the machine and how the <laughs> yeah. sound would go all screwy during that? It's almost like that. We apologise if anyone's here too young to have bought himself. But all of you see... Oh. In my what day... We had a VHS. <laughs> In my day, we had to rewind our music by using a pencil. Anyway, um, uh, next song, um, Falls Apart. This is very much a new metal song. It is. With that uh, said, it's good new metal. I mean, I think the consummation had quite a few like, kind of songs. We were talking about consummation last episode about how the first part of it. So, yeah, it's stereotypical straight up new metal. Mm. In this case, I think it's a better example of it. Yeah. Um, it's kind of there's a conception that some people think, oh, new metal is just straight up bad. Yeah. It really isn't. I think in the other genre, the stuff you know most likely is also the worst kind of crap. Yeah. Well, funnily enough, the guy who introduced me to Hurt had Hurt as, like, number four on the top ten list. Yeah, nice. I'll just check out the list out as I put it on there. Yeah. Uh, I know Taproot is on there. Definitely listen to Taproot. I've heard good things about them, actually. Mm. Uh, not the kind of band I've ever actually probably listened to. Uh, I've only listened to a couple of songs, so I can't comment. Really, with new metal, they kind of you know, start out, they kind of basically everyone else starts out and just decorn and disturb and sleep not as a kid and then just kind of stop listening. Yeah. Um, Other than System of a Down occasionally and Disturbed, I don't really listen to any new metal most of the time, it says. Mm. I'd hurt, I guess, that. But. Um, this is another song. It does benefit from a slow build up. Mm. And, um, well, because I've been writing notes about things. Um, there does feel like a genuine build-up of frustration. Uh, you know, when you go through a breakup, quite often you go through a phase of abject self-pitying. Mm. But you also hate yourself for that fact. I mean, some elements of the song actually do remind me of partly of Seether and partly of Shine Down a little bit, actually. Mm. To a certain extent. Mm. I don't know, though. Most of the elements are relatively minor compared to the actual overhaul. Yeah. Yeah. One thing it does feel like it does is emphasise the concept of death and when a relationship ends, it just mm. feels like the tragedy of... Because you are mourning for something, so it feels like it's um, working around that concept of mourning for the death of something. Yeah, that's death of a concept rather than the death of a thing. Yeah. I, mean, I think the one thing that I don't particularly like about the song is, you know, the kind of repetitive nature of the lyrics. Yeah. They get a little bit overboard with it. I mean, I, I can't understand why they're doing it. Kind of like Adam versus one of them, but it just does it a bit too much. Yeah, it's one of the lyrically, it's one of their weaker songs because it does go through the whole verse, refrain, chorus, verse, refrain, chorus system. And so most of the lyrics are the same thing. Mm. So I was going to think, just let the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> oh, well, that's literally. <laughs> how many words are in that? Like. I'm trying to think of... One of these days I'm going to go through that song and actually count how many different words there are. What, about 30 tops? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, we're probably overestimating. Mm, yeah. The bodies hit the floor. That's six. And that's repeated like a dozen times. Probably yeah. more. There's just nothing wrong with me. One, nothing wrong with me. Two, uh, Yeah. There's nobody much else to add. <laughs> Welcome to the retrospective on Drowning Pool. No, not doing that. <laughs> I'm just saying that the song seems to have a very sudden end to it as well. Mm. It probably has some certain meaning to it. Maybe it's just you know, signalising just him going, oh god, why? Yeah. It's over. Uh, I messed up again when I tried. You spend all your money, then die. And oh, by the way, with all you did, nothing has changed. So lie like a waste by the side as everything just falls apart. Because everything just fell apart for me. Mm. Reading the lyrics, it's, uh, it actually makes a lot of sense that it follows on from Overdose, thinking about it. It's kind of sad in his own way, because Overdose is genuinely really good, and this just seems a bit lackluster. Mm. It could have been so much more. Yeah. I mean, 
it's an okay song. It's not like um, some of the songs on uh, Consummation. Probably have that introduction chunk. Mm, yeah. Um, I guess everybody has their ups and downs. Mm. Uh, go to the next song, uh, Forever. Bits of this, bits of it remind me of Korn. Yeah, I think it's kind of, there's certain guitar tone. But it's kind of like if Korn was given the anger of Fear Factory. A little bit, I can hear the kind of more industrial side of things with the guitar as well. Mm. Also, it's the it's struck... Kind of, the weird kind of higher pitch look vocals kind of weird me out there. Mm. Yeah. Well, the structure is very Fear Factory. Um, you know, the sort of how it goes from very blunt force trauma style vocals to a much more ethereal sounding style. Mm. Kind of like a little bit nails as well. Yeah. Um, also, the instrumentation is much. It goes from blunt force trauma, sort of very chunky guitaring and all that sort of thing. So much more fluid. It's almost like they're trying to drown you with the instrumentation. <laughs> We're getting kind of close to like a wall of sound guitar style. Mm. Uh, it's kind of very, very smooth or very chunky. Yeah. It's like having chicken soup. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> analogy! We got the other of you know, the pure uh, liquidy bits and then you got the chunks of meat. I guess. <laughs> I didn't say my had to make that much sense. Mm. This one kind of does in a strange way. Um. I don't know. Is it actually him doing all the vocals? As far as as Just far as these ones sound kind of different to his usual voice. I suppose maybe he's trying something different, or maybe actually it's a different person. I don't know. Um. Well, you've got two. You've got both Josh Ansley and Paul Spatola um doing backing vocals, so that could have an Possibly, effect yeah. on it. Um, let's see. Um, the lyrics. It, I mean, this is one of the more difficult to penetrate songs in terms of lyricism. It's always good to have. Yeah. Um, not not so much oblique as much as it's very difficult to figure out the actual perspective of it. Um, the opening verse. There is no safe place for me to hide. There's no safe place for me too tired. There is no safe place for me to hide. There's no safe place for me. Now, the whole there is no safe place, it's almost like it almost becomes a mantra. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. It's just repeating it over as such, but like kind of, I think I like prior, which was just a mantra, is, but mm. yeah, it's an odd one. I suppose one more towards their experimental side again. Yeah. It's something I like them doing. So at least they experiment a couple of times every album, and that's what I can appreciate. Yeah. I mean, part of the sort of breakdown for it, um, forever, won't you lend me your sins against you, for everything I understand, one thousand more won't comprehend, forever, it always hurts when it's someone you love, won't you rise, rise above, forever, it always hurts when it's someone you love, won't you rise, rise above, there's a price in blood. Now, uh, this, again, we get to uh, seemingly sort of anti-religious sentiments and that sort of thing. Well, we're most linked to the use of the mantra kind of style, so. Yeah. It's not as mm. It's... Again, the lyrics are difficult to pin down. It There's clearly a cohesive narrative to this one. It's just... It's a bit difficult to work out the exact intentions of them. It's gone from the kind of... Like, telling it's like, oh, well, I have no idea what's going on here. Mm. It's being more kind of, yeah, there is a structure, it does make sense, it's just it's not going to be entirely straightforward. Yeah. I'm fine with things not being straightforward because it, again, it's songs that get you to think about what they're saying. Mm, it's a good way to go. Mm. Uh, I mean, yeah, like, I it's not, it's not like a lot of mainstream music, it's, the, the lyrics are very, very simplistic. Yeah. I mean, as I was saying about um, Drowning Pool and how repetitive their lyrics are. It's like, they just do a... I, I swear all they did for half their songs was just copy and paste the first few lyrics. I, I swear that's all... I, I've heard a few of their songs and yeah, it's pretty much the same situation throughout. Yeah, they are not... They're not good with words. Yeah, but anyway, as I say, the repeated lines don't feel... It doesn't feel repetitive, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, it does. I sometimes do that. Mm. Just to get to, I think it's the way it's done. You know, sometimes you just know it's done in a way that just feels right. Other times it does it over the top and it's just a little. Mm. For example, you know, it's not so. But then let's do it together, essentially. Mm. When it doesn't do it right, when it does. Uh, next song, Losing. This is a song I like quite a lot. Mm. I think what's most remarkable is how it feels like it interchanges frequently between sort of slow build up and explosive full force instrumentals and lyrics. Hmm. They kind of had a switching up of things earlier with Overdose, so. Yeah. Uh, it's just done a bit differently here. It's done in a kind of quite a different way, despite having a similar kind of structure to it. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like. Um, you know those games where it's sort of like you'll be trying to get up a very steep incline and then suddenly it will dip down and it'll be very yeah. easy going downwards. It kind of feels like that sort of progression. Mm, I quite like it. Yeah. It's not bad progression. It really works because, um, again, this is one of the times when they go into their more anguish and frustration over the loss of a relationship. A breakdown of things and it yeah. when you're going through that situation it does feel like that so it really feels effective it's really interesting of I don't know, not only is it kind of you've got the build ups and you've got the uh, kind of crescendos mm -hmm. but it also kind of works in the same way that the uh, vocals are done yeah the, you know it has kind of sh sharp snappy lyrics to the chorus where it kind of drags out the uh, sounds mm -hmm. and as with uh, Overdose again it kind of has that kind of rhythmic feel with the actual instrumentals and the vocals I think it's the refrain, which I really like in the song. Mm. It's very short, but it's really nice. Yeah. That's one thing I've noticed, though. On this album, there's not really a short, short song. No, it's relatively equal across the board. Yeah. It's not instrumental either, that's weird. Really. Yeah, the only real instrumental isn't really an instrumental, per se. <laughs> yeah, but... I mean, the last couple of had their interludes. Yeah. Both the openings and the endings, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But we'll get to that when we... I mean, that's quite a way down the line. Um, yeah. Uh, lyrics for losing. Again, I mean, what I like about Hurt is whilst the lyrics do feel quite oblique at times, they also feel easily understandable. I think it covers both of them. There's an obvious kind of straightforward meaning behind it, but most of think there might be more behind it. If you look into it further, you can see more complex. And also, this is where we get to, um, you know, there being clear themes throughout the album, because uh, I asked it where it had been, then we started arguing. I'm just like the other ones, but I don't believe you think I'm dumb. And where did all the money go? Did Jesus come and no one know? Sugar, spice and insulin, hold me till you're back again, because it feels like I'm losing you when it feels like I'm u losing you. Uh, There's a lot of parallels with the lyrics compared to some of the earlier ones. Well, if you think, um, if we go into sort of stereotype territory of sort of relationships where you've got drug dealers and that sort of thing. Um, mm. It does feel like, you know, the sort of, you know, where's the heroin? That sort of argument suddenly blowing up. Um, so, um, especially when you get to things like her silver spoon oblivion paints her blue and black again. While I hear I love you, I need you, I'm still here. Wow. If you know about drug paraphernalia, then you shouldn't... <laughs> And Silver Spoon is kind of. Well, considering that entire line there, very much you know, straight up states the whole concept of you know, losing the wonder drugs. Yeah. So, as I say, there feels like definite themes here. So, it feels like it's not so much losing someone in a relationship to, you know, not losing them because you've been abusive or. It, there's no romance anymore or anything like that. It's he's physically losing them to the drugs. Yeah, he's saying, "Yeah, don't do drugs. I'm here for you. I'll, I'll take your burdens." And they're like, "I don't know, I'm on the paragraph." Mm. I mean, 
So I was still trying and fighting and pushing in vain, and all you did just to stop it would add to its strength, because a juggernaut will not stop even with you in the way. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it definitely feels like that. It's sort of there's continuing themes throughout the album that sort of run parallel to each other. You know, it'd be interesting to do a sort of experiment where you'd listen to each song that felt like they had connecting narratives. There's even quite a few of them across the discography. Yeah. Even just the ones we've covered so far. Hmm. Yeah, as well as like concepts within within the like little individual concepts within an album that isn't haunted on. Yeah. I mean, that's probably why it wouldn't be classified as a concept album, because there's several concepts that layer on top of each other. It's like a kind of little snippet to it. I suppose it allows them to tell kind of little mini episodes without interdicting the whole album to a certain topic. Yeah. Uh, mm. The next song. This is where we get into interesting territory, because, as we said before, repeated songs. The next song is Unkind. Obviously, there's no Same point. One. Hmm? Same one from, uh, well, it's, yeah, it's the opening it's track of their self titled album. And um, the interesting thing about this is, whilst lyrically they've not really done that much, because, I mean, it's slightly longer. It's like 30 seconds longer, little less than that. So there's a bit more instrumentation, but lyrically it's pretty much identical. Mm, pretty much the same song. Yeah. But they change things up here and there. Yeah. I mean, for example, the opening. Now, the opening of the original was this sort of crackly, static, sort of whispered vocals. This opening well, is... This case is just yeah. Well, this case there's sort of... Um, it's much more... The opening is just instrumentals. Yeah. Um, uh, and the introduction chunk before it goes into the vocals. Yeah. And it's a much more downplayed opening that... It explodes. As it kicks in, so he's like, this song is in your ears. Hmm. <laughs> um, as I say, there's not really much to discuss other than it's it's like they took the original and basically said, okay, structurally, this is fine, but the sound quality needs to be improved. We want to rearrange certain parts so that because it kind of sounds like the original opening becomes the ending of this version. I thought it kind of maybe extended it a little bit as well. Yeah. I thought they kind of just looked back and thought, okay, that's a pretty good song, we did a pretty good job with it, but let's just, you know, beef it up a little bit. Hmm. I mean, just thought it was one of those songs, and so I thought, you know, since it was so rare to have to get a copy of it, yeah. you thought, okay, people need to hear this better. Mm. So, you know, we released it again, touch it up a bit, um, throw it on the new album, so you're getting a bigger audience, I think. Yeah. Um... So that's that for that one. Dance Russe, or Russe, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Dance Russe, I guess, I don't know. It's German. We've already discussed how I sometimes have difficulty with German words. It's the first time they used German anyway. So. Well, they spoke in German the last album, but they didn't title anything with German. No, there wasn't any particular connection to German. Mm. I don't know what... You know, the guy doesn't have a wiki page or anything, so I don't, I can't look up what his parents were or anything like that. It's basically a case of when you try to look up his wiki, it directs you back to Hurt. Yes. <laughs> yeah. well, it doesn't have enough attention or enough information to actually build up a Yeah. But yeah. Put simply, I cannot for the life of me figure out how to describe this song. It's... It actually kind of reminds me a little bit of um, a piece of sitting in places, actually. I think kind of, kind of waves sound to it. It's mm. I mean, it's got sort of elements of various genres, sort of bits of country rock, bits of new metal, bits of classical, all that sort of thing. And it's all blended in a very intriguing way, but it's it's very difficult to actually pin down. I mean, it's there definitely is no one genre that this song would fall into. It is strange, but they mix, they mix the mix of genres together rather nicely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, it feels like um, they they were experimenting in sort of how close to the wire they could go within self-imposed restraints, both musically and vocally. Because mm. um, for the most part, it's it's sort of this very very pulled back style of vocal. It's kind of, very deep, kind of chill song. Yeah, and vocally, it's very restrained, but for. For like an imperceptible amount of time, it's like 
two or three seconds, there's suddenly this explosion. And it's sort of like, wait, where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> I mean, I actually really, really like the sound of the chorus in the song. Yeah. Because um, the kind of guitar right there and the vocals, just, it flows really nicely. Yeah. Uh, the chorus being, hold on to me, please. Don't you let go of me. Come on over. Roll on over. I just need to feel you breathe. Oh, Jesus. It's continuing a theme. There's a tiny dancer in my bed, and she never has too much to say. She reminds me of the dance russe when my emotions are wounded. Her motions and movements chase the ghosts from me. I'm just going to look up what actually dance russe means. I mean, obviously... <laughs> what dance I mean, Yeah. It's an... It uses the form of dance in English quite a few things. Yeah. What do they russe means? It's like red or something, maybe? Um, judging oh, by the... Cool. Judging by the pictures I'm finding, it must be root. It must be red. You know, it's all. Let's talk about red dance. Yeah. yeah. Um, same as sort of words like rouge and things like that. Isn't that also, for example? Yeah. Mm. I'm just thinking sort of phonetically rouge and rousse. Also, rose. I'm thinking more, yeah. If, if rouge, rousse, rousse, also. They're all very similar across the languages. Yeah. I think red. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I'm pretty sure this must be continuing the theme of um, drug overdosing and things like that, because if you think, if someone's overdosing, then there will be this desperate need to be able to make sure that they're still breathing, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's quite often they want to just choke them the room from it or whatever. Yeah. Or blood or, or whatever other horrible thing. Hmm. Um... But yeah, it's it's a very interesting song because the very brief moment that he explodes, it's kind of like he's suddenly, it's a, a sort of psychological break at that moment. Yeah. I mean, we can only sort of make our own guesses as to the various meanings, but this is what we can infer. There could be easily be deeper meanings, though, because we are not lyricists. We are merely intelligent people who like to analyse songs. That's what we do. Mm. Um, anyway, next song, Dirty. Dirty. Yeah, Dirty kind of... Musically, it sounds like a mix of new metal and sort of like red hot chili peppers. I think it's like the kind of just the drum beat mixing around the peppers. Mm. Not like kind of nearly acoustic guitar, I guess. Yeah. Also, elements of Beck. Yeah, I can hear that. Um, I'm again, I'm really not sure what to make of it. I quite like it. Yeah. I mean, it's not. I think that's the kind of weird song of this album. Yeah, well, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, it's not amazingly, amazingly brilliant. It, I doubt it would... Well, it wouldn't reach either of our top 10s, or top 20s for that matter, but it's a good song. Well, probably even further than that. Huh? Yeah, well, sure. Yeah. Well, probably even more than that. But... Yeah. Well, to be fair, how much music do we both listen to daily? Multiple albums, surely. Huh? Multiple albums a day. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's a good song. It's a solid song. Uh... And again, we get to lyrics that I... It feels like there's a... They are maintaining the theme for a good chunk of the album. Uh, All my life I've tried to be the, like the man in the pictures with outstretched hands, wearing purple around his neck, and he's saying words that I can't forget. Won't you tell me just who made you judge and ruler over me? Little girl, can you tell just who made you so very goddamned holy? Well, I'm interested to see, actually. Is, obviously, we'll cover it next episode. But I'm interested to see how these themes carry through into Volume 2. Yeah. Is uh, there any parallels there? I mean, I did just, for curiosity's sake, leave the albums running one into the other, and it that's where I started to get very puzzled as to why they weren't just a double album. So kind of continuity there. Yeah. At least musically. Lyrically, we'll have to do an analysis on that, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Because um, uh, I tried to be the best I could, and I tr- I did the best my frail mind could. 
I'd trade it all just for one touch. I'd give it all to be enough to make things new. So it's all following the themes of frustration re with religion, wanting to start over again, questioning what reasons people have, all that sort of thing. This is kind of following in the line of everything else now. Yeah. At least one of the lines, at least. Mm. Yeah. I think the most interesting thing about it is how... I'm sure you noticed it too, how at the end it, it ends with a bit of somnambulist. Yeah, I didn't say it. I was like, okay then. I wonder what kind of, whether they decided that was some kind of thematic choice, or they just thought it would sound good. Mm. I mean, I don't really see a thematic link there, really. Yeah. But uh, I thought, oh, well, we've, we've already made it. I think it would sound good here as an outro. Yeah. But through Somnambulist, it connects it directly to the next song. Again, carry well, over. Just in the first place, mm. which was in the original album, was connected to the next song. Yeah. So. Which, in this case, Cold Inside has been repeated on this album, but it sounds far more interesting than it did on Consummation. Yeah, because we had it there, we're like, mm, it's kind of dull. Yeah. In this case, they're going to get it off of a makeover. Hmm. I mean, I think what really helps in this case is the addition of things like violins and echo effects, making it sound... So struck back. Yeah, it makes it sound far more haunted than it originally does. Right, I kind of see maybe in the original one they wanted you know, to be cold inside, they wanted it to be empty and desolate. Yeah. But it just didn't quite bring a right kind of feel to it. Yeah. I mean, it actually, ironically, with having more in it, it actually sounds more cold. Mm. I just kind of think I just tried, you know, just do it so minimal as before. And I thought, mm, okay, it didn't quite work out as it planned. Yeah. Um, I thought, oh, there's, there's a good base here for a song, but it didn't quite be what we wanted, so let's re record it, let's add a few bits in there to make it actually kind of into its full potential. Mm. I mean, it's still not exactly that great, in my opinion, but it's definitely an improvement over the consummation moment. I, I'd say, now, we said about how if we were listening to the consummation, we'd probably both skip Cold Inside. I would agree with that. Yeah. On... I think generally skip songs now, but sometimes I just can't watch. Yeah. On Volume 1, I wouldn't necessarily skip it simply because it does actually feel more thematically appropriate in this case. It doesn't fit better with the themes. I mean, I suppose it's... I don't actually know actually having an overall theme, it fits into that one originally where it just wasn't an overarching theme. Yeah. Um, and all the stuff around it is much more interesting. Yeah. Uh, like his placement in the last album wasn't necessarily the best. Yeah. So maybe it could work if it, like, it was actually the final song on the album, maybe? I could have done a drop by that Potentially, yeah. Um, yeah. Not much else to say, really, other than it is an improvement on before. Uh, finally, House Carpenter. This may well be my favourite song on the album. Same. I. I mean, our musical structure of it, um, it feels greatly influenced by neoclassical composers. Yeah, I can definitely hear that. You know, I, I can hear bits of sort of like John Williams, Ennio Morricone, Hans Zimmer, even Clint Mansell to a certain extent. Hmm, it's definitely the kind of thing I can hear. It's probably sort of exactly why I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, for me, it actually feels like an opera piece instead of just a metal song. You know, it actually feels. Yeah, it feels like a metal opera. Um, the question is, is, how long is the version you've got? The version I've got. Uh, that's a that's a difficult question to answer because technically speaking, it's six minutes forty five seconds. However, yeah, the person I've been listening to is nine and a half. So yeah. Well, that's what I mean. The song itself, House Carpenter, is six minutes forty five. But there's a hidden track. Which will it's come. A mini hidden track and a lot of oh, it's a lot of ambience in the middle. It kind of essentially has a sound of rain for like three minutes. Yeah. Um, it starts out with, which is cool. It's actually better than just a little silence as well, which mm. I like. So I wish you had the kind of how there's a little silence at the end of the song and then how a hidden track thing, and then you managed to pull it off by then not being silent in the first place, and actually not being too long either. Mm. Although 15 minutes are literally nothing. Oh god, the amount of times I've come across that, and it's sort of like, why is there all this silence? In this case, that's the rain effect really helps it out. Yeah. It really gives the idea that definitely is something coming up. Mm. And if it doesn't drag it out forever, it just makes you think, oh, it's only in you know, a couple of minutes of this rather than, oh, it was only like quarter of an hour or nothing. Mm. Um, our house carpenter, that feels like kind of a. Uh, our, our mistake was the love we made. I didn't deliberate, but I never meant you wrong. No, I didn't mean it. 
If you've ever loved... Ugh, I'm screwing up the lyrics all over the place. If you've ever lost a loved one, I pray for you. I really do. If you've ever lost a loved one, I pray for you. Because there's a sad and lonely comfort in the hollow of your eyes. But don't you let it take you over, because it will eat you up inside. Interesting. This is the second song I have called Fast Counter, which I presume is based on some kind of like poem or something. Because the other one has a very similar kind of structure to it. Um, I'll investigate. This is a song by Nickel Creek, you know, a neo folk band. Not kind of acoustic folk, but it's strange how to describe them, I guess. But um, I've only introduced it to them. It's a popular Scottish ballad. Oh, okay. Also known as The Demon Lover, which oh, okay. explains a lot. Um, this is where we become the education ministers. <laughs> um, okay, this thing is there's certain definitely a lot of elements of progressive rock here, mm. which I really really like. Right, a man, usually the devil, returns to his former lover after a long absence and finds her with a husband, usually a carpenter, and a baby. He entices her to leave both behind and come with him luring her with many ships laden with treasure. They board one of his ships, which in many versions she is surprised to find does not have a crew, and put to sea. But if I should leave my husband, dear, likewise my little son also, what have you to maintain me with all, if I along with you should go? I have seven ships upon the seas, and one of them brought me to land, and seventeen mariners to wait on thee, for to be at your command. Or command. You don't say land, do you? Um, yeah, this is a really, really good song. Mm. Also really nice on command as well. Yeah. If you're not breathing, why am I left alone in this ship? If you're not leaving, why am I left alone? I'm sure you're married to your house carpenter, and your love will never be mine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this must be based off the Scottish ballad. Hmm. I'm trying to work out what it actually reminds me of, though, because this song does remind me of lots of different things. Hmm. But, out of all the songs I've heard, this is arguably be my favourite Hurt song period. <laughs> it's just, I love everything about it. Just puzzling over this and, and thinking about it, I think it wouldn't work if it weren't for the hidden track, potentially. Yeah. Because the hidden track doesn't so much feel like a full-on track as much as just... It's got a little epilogue. Yeah. Sort of a warm-down kind of thing. So this is once again proving my theory that if there's an album with a song on it that has rain effects, it is totally going to be the best song on the album. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not wrong in this case. Yeah, I mean, this song has a rain effects in it, and it's the best song on the album. Um, Safety Waters You by The Cure, that has a rain effects in it. Um, Insomniums of the Weeping World album starts out with Rain of X. Uh, Draconian's Arcane Rain fell, still fell out with Rain of X. And those two albums are practically perfect. Mm. As is the situation by the gear. All three of them have Rain of X. Maybe we should do a sort of special on songs with particular effects and how they are in relation to the album. Maybe. Yeah, basically, if a song has, or a song on an album has Rain of X somewhere, it's probably going to be pretty great. Mm. Uh, more songs that have Rain of X and they're amazing. <laughs> But yeah, there's not really much more to discuss, as the hidden track, it's literally, it, it's like 45 seconds, very, it's very short. It is, yeah. So, I think we'll leave it at that, and I'll edit this all together, We can, and it'll be released by the end of the week. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. And the next episode, we'll be discussing Volume 2 and find out how things work together. It'd be interesting if, like, there was some way of combining the two together into an optimal playlist or something. Mm. It kind of reminds me of um, Rosetta's Break Lift album. Mm -hmm. This is a two-disc album. Both discs are albums themselves, but you can actually play both of them at the same time and they work perfectly. Fair deuce. It's really freaking cool. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that is... Sort of, um, Mm -hmm. 2000 Days by Tools album does that same kind of thing as well. If you play certain songs at the same time, they melt perfectly. I can't really comment because I've never really been able to get into Tool. Personally, I've only heard a couple of albums of them. Mm. They're pretty enjoyable, but not something that stands out as being must listen to. Mm. Anyway, um, that's us signing off. It's goodbye from me. Yeah, goodbye from me. See you soon. I